Surprising effects of coffee on the body you had no idea about. Caffeine is one of the most widely used substances on the planet. Surprisingly enough, it is estimated that more than 90% of adults consume coffee on a daily basis, as well as 50% of teenagers. It makes your brain sharper and has shown many other benefits. In fact, coffee is packed with antioxidants called polyphenols. These important antioxidants help protect your body. Whether you love drinking coffee every day or just once in a while, knowing about polyphenols, how adding milk changes things, or what happens to your body when you choose decaf over regular coffee can enhance your coffee experience and equip you with knowledge you did not know. But coffee can also have negative effects. In this video, we will dive into aspects that are rarely discussed, like the reinforcing effect that caffeine has on us and its role in boosting dopamine levels. We will touch on mold toxins that can infiltrate your coffee beans and contaminate your body. Is the coffee that we drink really clean? We uncover whether coffee is good or bad for you. We tell you how to take advantage of caffeine or conversely, how to avoid its negative effects. Is it hardcore to say that coffee can be considered a drug because it contains caffeine, which is a psychoactive substance? Well, the truth is that caffeine stimulates the central nervous system, temporarily warding off drowsiness and restoring alertness, which classifies it as a stimulant. People consume it daily, primarily for its ability to increase wakefulness and improve concentration and focus. Studies have shown that caffeine can temporarily sharpen your focus and memory. Caffeine increases adrenaline levels in the blood, a hormone that prepares your body for intense physical exertion. This can lead to improved physical performance, making coffee a popular pre-workout drink. However, the downside is it can also increase anxiety and jittery feelings. Caffeine has a notable effect on appetite suppression, which can aid in weight loss efforts. This stimulant temporarily reduces feelings of hunger and decreases the desire to eat by influencing the levels of certain neurotransmitters in the brain that control appetite, such as dopamine and norepinephrine. Think about it. When you're filled with adrenaline, there's not time to be hungry. Also, caffeine increases thermogenesis, the body's process of generating heat and energy from digesting food, which can lead to burning more calories even when at rest. The verdict? Through these mechanisms, caffeine can play a supportive role in weight management by both curbing appetite and burning more calories even at rest. Research suggests that coffee drinkers may have a lower risk of developing neurological diseases such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. The compounds in coffee may have neuroprotective effects for the brain. Coffee consumption has been linked to a lower risk of liver diseases, including liver cirrhosis and liver cancer. The exact mechanisms are not fully understood, but we think it may involve coffee's effects on enzymes that protect the liver. Next on our list, mixing milk into coffee. It's understood that milk can alter the body's ability to benefit from coffee's polyphenols. These antioxidants are crucial for protecting our bodies from damage. However, the proteins and other components in milk may bind with these polyphenols, diminishing their effectiveness and making it more difficult for our bodies to absorb them. Studies point out that milk's case in protein, in particular, tends to stick to polyphenols. Such interactions might lessen some of the health perks coffee's polyphenols offer. For individuals concerned about maximizing the health benefits of coffee's polyphenols, consider consuming black coffee or decaffeinated coffee. Did you know that decaf coffee has more polyphenols than regular coffee? This is because when coffee beans are made into decaf, the caffeine is taken out, but the process doesn't get rid of the polyphenols. Some ways of removing caffeine can even make these healthy antioxidants more concentrated. So, when you drink decaf, you're still getting a lot of the good stuff from coffee, just without the caffeine kick. Next up, sugar in your coffee. Pouring sugar into your cup can cause your blood sugar to spike. Sugar adds calories and carbs to your drink, which turn into glucose and rush into your blood. This is often why some people feel a slump in energy later in the day. Such a quick rise in blood sugar is crucial for those with diabetes or who are watching their blood sugar closely. Drinking sugary coffee regularly can mess with your blood sugar management, lead to gaining weight, 
and even raise the chance of getting type 2 diabetes. What happens when you suddenly quit coffee, especially after it's been a big part of your daily routine? You might go through withdrawal because your body misses the caffeine it's used to. You could get headaches, feel really tired or sleepy, become easily annoyed, have a hard time focusing, and sometimes feel low or sad. This happens because your body got used to the pick-me-up that caffeine provides, and now it has to get used to not having that extra push. Withdrawal symptoms can kick in from 12 to 24 hours after your last coffee and might stick around for a few days up to a week, slowly getting better as your body adjusts to being without caffeine. Consuming caffeine, especially in the late afternoon or evening, can delay your body's internal clock, reduce the total time you spend asleep, and affect the quality of sleep you get. Caffeine blocks the action of a neurotransmitter called adenosine, which helps you feel sleepy. This can lead to difficulty falling asleep, restlessness during the night, and not feeling fully rested in the morning. The exact effect of caffeine on sleep varies from person to person, depending on individual sensitivity and tolerance. To minimize its impact on sleep, it's generally recommended to avoid caffeine at least 8 to 10 hours before bedtime. Caffeine and dopamine have an interesting connection. Dopamine is a chemical in your brain that makes you feel good. When you drink coffee, the caffeine in it blocks a substance in your brain called adenosine. Adenosine usually makes you feel tired, but when caffeine blocks it, you don't feel as sleepy and your brain releases more dopamine. This increase in dopamine makes you feel more alert and in a better mood. Basically, caffeine indirectly causes your brain to produce more dopamine, which is why after a cup of coffee, you might feel more awake, happier, and motivated. It's not surprising that caffeine's role in enhancing dopamine levels explains its widespread popularity and habitual use. The fact that caffeine boosts dopamine levels sheds light on why it's so widely enjoyed and regularly consumed. Much like certain drugs can powerfully influence the brain's reward system by altering dopamine levels, coffee has a similar effect. This makes coffee a powerful reinforcer, not only affecting the flavor you prefer, but also influencing everything from the place you purchase it to the very cup you choose to drink it from. Up next, coffee and mold toxins. Coffee is produced in a wide range of qualities, from high-grade beans, hand-picked in the best climates, to lower-grade options that may not be processed as carefully. During the growing, harvesting, and processing stages, coffee beans can be exposed to moisture, leading to the growth of mold. These molds can produce toxins, such as ochratoxin A, which can remain in the beans even after roasting and brewing. The presence of these mold toxins can vary greatly depending on the quality of the coffee and the conditions under which it was produced and stored. To minimize the risk of exposure to mold toxins, opt for a clean cup of coffee. How quickly can you eliminate coffee from your system? People break down caffeine in their bodies at different rates, which means some can drink coffee late in the day and sleep just fine, while others might have one morning cup and feel jittery or have trouble sleeping at night. This difference is mainly because of our genes. Everyone has a gene that controls the enzyme responsible for breaking down caffeine in the liver, but some people's genes make them do this slower or faster. Slow metabolizers can feel the effects of caffeine for a longer time and might be more likely to experience side effects like sleeplessness or a faster heart rate. On the other hand, fast metabolizers quickly break down caffeine, so its effects don't last as long and they can often enjoy coffee without as many issues. Balancing consumption and being in tune with how caffeine affects your body are essential for reducing any risks and making the most of your coffee experience. Leave a comment if you think you're a fast or slow caffeine metabolizer. We're curious to hear from you, whether you think you are addicted to coffee or have control over how much you consume. Should coffee be considered a drug? Let's chat in the comment section below. See you in the next video.